Let's go over the more detailed Doppler effect equations. Now, just as a reminder about Doppler effect, remember what happens here if we have a source that's moving towards the observer, let's say the observer is stationary, then these wave fronts are here will be squished, so the wavelength will be smaller, whereas uh, on the back end of here, these wavelength are here will be actually larger. So it depends on if it's coming towards you or away from you and so on. And remember, remember that we have this equation right here, the V equals F lambda, so, so that means that if we have a constant v, that means if f goes down, lambda goes up, and so on. And remember that if we have, for example, uh, wavelength goes down, then we know that the frequency goes up. And we know that if the wavelength goes up, the frequency goes down. So this is really important to know. Because as something comes towards, and let's maybe write this down in here, we'll say this is you know, towards you, so the source moves towards. This is if you're going away. So this is sort of the nice, easy key to this right here, at least. This is the trick to Doppler effect. So now let's see if we can apply this and use an equation for it, because now we can actually figure out, hey, what happens with the observed frequency, the emitted frequency, what if you're moving at a certain speed, and what's the speed of sound? So let's take a look at this one here. We have this formula from your data booklet, and it goes like this. F primed, so that's the observed frequency of the sound is equal to the emitted frequency of the sound times, now this is going to be V over V, interestingly enough it goes plus minus US. I'll explain this in a second here. Here we go. So what do we do with this? First of all, let's look at what each of these variables means. So we've got observed frequency, that's what you actually measure. Um, emitted frequency, that's in hertz, and we got the speed of sound, so the sound is actually, that's this V here. It's usually around 330 meters per second or so. Um, and I see as a trick I use for my daughters is that it takes about three seconds to go a kilometer for sound. So like uh, when they're scared, if there's like a lightning storm, for example, I get them to try to concentrate on that. So uh, when you see the flash of light, just count three seconds. So one, two, three, that's one kilometer. So then one, two, three, that's two kilometers and so on. That's a nice easy way. Now what's interesting about it though is that US is the speed of your source, so that's like the speed of the car driving or whatever. And when do you use a plus or a minus? I think the best way to do it is use some logic here. If it's coming towards you, you know that the wavelength has to be smaller, so you know the frequency has to be bigger. So then you should think, ooh, what value will give me the biggest version of this? For example, like if I want this to be bigger than this, then what do I want to do? I want to divide by a smaller number, for example. If I want this here to be a smaller number, then I want to divide by a bigger number, so I'll do a V plus US. So we'll, we'll see how that works. So this is the equation at least we have for a moving source. Now for a moving observer, it's very, very similar to above, except we've got just a slightly different equation here. So this time the equation goes like this, so F primed equals F times, and this time it goes V plus or minus U O over V, where V is still the speed of sound, and this time it's your speed of your observer is UO. Now keep in mind, um, this works in a similar way. You have to use some logic to figure out basically um, are you going to add or subtract. It depends if you want F prime to be bigger, well then make this one right here a larger number. If you want F prime to be smaller, then make this a smaller number. So do V minus UO and so on. So let's see that with an example. I think that would help. So this is an example here, we have a car approaching an observer, and remember what's going to happen here, if it's coming towards, that means lambda, let's remember this, lambda is going to be smaller, therefore wave uh, frequency has to be bigger, so the frequency should increase, so we want that to be bigger. So let's see what happens here. We have a car approaches a stationary observer at a constant speed of 10 meters per second. Speed of sound in air is 330. Right away, without anything else, I can already start thinking about, hey, observer speed, sorry, a stationary observer, we have a moving car. So we'll say it's a moving source. So we'll say US, I know then equals 10 meters per second. And I know that this right here is V. So I know that V, the speed of sound, is 330. That's useful. And the observer measures a frequency. What's that that we just found? Measured frequency is actually F primed. So I know that that's 450 hertz. This is really helpful just to find out like what do we know. So this first question right here says, hey, what's the observed speed of sound as the car approaches? And that's actually a trick question. Now why is it a trick question? Well, that's because the speed of sound is constant in this situation. 
So what does that mean? That means, that, well, because the speed of sound is constant in the situation, what that means then, in this case, it's still just going to be this 330 meters per second. It won't change. So this right here will be unchanged. This is kind of a neat trick question just to try to trip you up and think, oh, God, do I have to do something different with the speeds? Uh-uh, that was it. So in part B now, we want to know, hey, what's the frequency of the emitted sound by the car? So we know F prime. We want to know F. Okay, so we want F. So let's use our equation, first of all, it's going to help us to govern this behavior. Now, moving a source means that we have this equation right here. It goes F prime equals F times V over V plus or minus US. So let's write that down. So we have F prime. It's always good to write down what you're doing. It equals F times V over V plus or minus US. Now, we've got to think about this one carefully. This is the key part here. Let's think about it. So what do we want here? We want, because uh, this thing is coming towards, we know the frequency has to be bigger. So we want F primed to go up. If we want F primed to go up, what does that mean? You want a larger value here, that means you want to divide by a smaller number. So because of that, then that's why I'm going to do a minus. So it's not obvious, but that's just why, that's why I wanted that right there, okay? That was key there. So because of that, you want to divide by a smaller number in order to get a bigger result. Okay? So that's really important. If I want this here to be smaller, then I would want to divide by a larger number here. So I want to make it a V plus US. But in this case, I want it to be F prime to be larger. So that means I want to divide by a smaller number. Okay, that wasn't obvious. That's why it was a little bit sneaky. We had to think about it. So let's go ahead and calculate this then. So F prime equals F. I'm just going to try to keep the variables here. And I'm going to sub in what V is. So V is 330. So 330 divided by, well, 330 minus 10. Okay, great. So that means I have F prime equals F times 330 over, uh, well, we can say 320. Let me just do that on my calculator. So what is, we'll do it like this, so 330 over 320, it is, let's see, oh, thanks, well, I have a fraction, which actually I suppose isn't bad, but let's just do it as a decimal, 1.03125, so that means I have F primed equals 1.03, what was it again, 125 F. Now, if I want to know F, then, that means I have F equals, well, it's going to be F primed over 1.03125. And I know F primed. F primed is 450 hertz. So I'm going to say 450 divided by 1.03125. Let's do that. So I'll get F equals, let's see here. So I'm almost done. Let's get out my calculator, and I do 450 divided by this answer. So 450 divided by answer, and I get 436.364. So 436.364. Now I'm going to be allowed, uh, let's say, two significant figures. So we'll just say 440 then. So that means F equals approximately 440 hertz. Okay, so we've learned how to use this equation, right? This uh, observed frequency versus the emitted frequency. Uh, we've learned that if you have a moving source, we use this equation. If you have a moving observer, we use this. And the only tricky part is you have to be sneaky about, you have to know what your answer needs to be. So think about, you know, wavelength down, it means frequency means to be up. Then you can figure out if you should add or subtract in those equations, right? So you should either do a plus or a minus here or here, depending on what you need to happen.